Hi, welcome to the Daily Aviation Channel. This is Mark, and the plane you see here is the F-15 Eagle. Built by McDonnell Douglas in the early 1970s, it can reach Mach 2.5 while flying over 65,000 feet and is still considered today as one of the most powerful fighter jets in the world. Since its inception, more than 1,600 units of the F-15 have been built mainly to equip the U.S. Air Force, and despite more than 40 years of service, it remains one of the most important aircraft of the U.S. military fleet. The F-15 story starts in the 1960s, following the poor F-4's close air combat performance during the Vietnam War, and also following the new Soviet MiG-25 unveiling in 1964. These two events prompted the U.S. Air Force to launch the FX program in September 1968 with the goal to design a new and superior aircraft that was also able to perform close air combat. On December 23, 1969, the McDonnell Douglas Company was chosen for the design and production of this future aircraft. Quickly, the company's engineers began to work on the project and decided to integrate the latest aeronautical technologies of the time. On June 26, 1972, the first F-15 prototype left the McDonnell Douglas factory. This new aircraft had some characteristics of the F-4 Phantom, such as large size, two air intakes on the side, and two powerful engines. The F-15's cockpit was designed to give a perfect visibility to the pilot, especially during close air combat, and to help the F-15's maneuverability. Its engines were supplied with air by two variable geometry air intakes, which were able to rotate following the F-15's angle of attack. This ability allowed air into the engines in any situation. The F-15 prototype flew for the first time on July 27, 1972, and quickly showed excellent performance and proved its superiority over other U.S. aircraft. In fact, it was so effective that the U.S. Air Force hastily put it into service within its Tactical Air Command in 1974, only two years after the F-15's first flight. This marked the beginning of a long military career. Some years later, in the 1980s, the U.S. Air Force and NASA developed a variant of the F-15 Eagle to improve its short takeoff and landing capabilities, as well as its maneuverability capabilities. First called the F-15 Stowe, then the F-15 IFCS, this variant was equipped with a two-dimensional nozzle system that significantly improved the aircraft's maneuverability, as well as a cannier design which improved the F-15's ability to fly at low speeds and high angles of attack. This prototype also helped develop the F-15E Strike Eagle, a derivative version of the F-15 Eagle optimized for ground attack, and it entered service within the U.S. Air Force in April 1988. Another great use of the F-15 occurred during the Cold War. At this time, the emergence of enemy spy satellites highlighted the need to be able to destroy these satellites if needed. To this end, in the late 1970s, the U.S. developed the ASAT-ASM-135. This system used the F-15's incredible ability to fly vertically at high altitudes to launch a multi-stage anti-satellite missile. But after only one real shot against the Solwind satellite in 1985, the program was abandoned in 1988, mainly for political reasons. And always using the same logic, but this time to launch satellites and not destroy them, the DARPA agency launched in 2011 the Airborne Launch Assistance Space Access Contest, a project abandoned today but which was developed to put a 100-pound payload into low Earth orbit using an F-15. Theoretically, the airborne launcher would have been fired almost vertically by an F-15 at an altitude of about 40,000 feet and was to deliver its payload in low Earth orbit some minutes later. The F-15 is powered by the Pratt & Whitney F-100 turbojets, similar to the one on the F-16, but unlike the F-16, which is equipped with only one F-100, the F-15 has two of them, built with an integrated afterburner. These two engines allow the F-15 to take off in shorter distances, but also provide enough power to exceed Mach 2 at high altitudes. And to slow down its speed during flight or during the landing phase, the F-15 is equipped with a large air brake 
located behind the cockpit that can deploy quickly to create a strong resistance with the air, immediately, of course, slowing down the aircraft. In terms of armament, the F-15 has been equipped since its creation by the famous M-61 Vulcan. It is the same gun that equips the Flanix SeaWiz system used to protect the U.S. Navy's ships against enemy anti-ship missiles, able to fire several hundred rounds in a few seconds and located on the right side of the F-15. This gun is capable of destroying with a few shots a target situated several hundred feet from the aircraft. A formidable firepower that goes perfectly with the F-15's extraordinary capabilities. That's the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you haven't done so yet, don't hesitate to subscribe to this channel. It's free. You can also watch my other videos. And if you like my work, you can support me on Patreon to help me produce more content. Thanks, and stay tuned for the next video.